Francis Wallace Fraser, a second generation Scots Ulsterman from the lineage of the Lovett and Fraser clans of Aberdeen. Frank, as he was better known, was born in 1885 in a Belfast Dockland pub known formerly as Cumber House, but at least in my generation was better known as Dubarry's, with a notorious reputation common with all such pubs around the world seaports. Here we see it in its three phases. Although still there, it is a rather more upmarket and popular licensed restaurant called McHugh's. When I told them about my grandfather, the staff very kindly offered to show me what would have been Frank's bedroom, but unfortunately I had to decline due to time and other commitments, so I never got to see it. Following in the family tradition, Frank joined the army as a boy soldier aged 14 with the 1st Battalion Loyal North Lancashire Regiment, just in time to be sent off to the Second Boer War, 1898 to 1901. Here we see his cap badge, and although there are no f known photographs of him in his army uniform, here is one of his battalion's NCOs whom he would have known, taken in South Africa in 1900. It gives a good representation of the uniforms then in use. The Boer War was synonymous with names such as the Siege of Ladysmith, the Relief of Mafeking, Kimberley and the Orange River, forever etched in history. Three provinces were involved in this three-year war, Cape Colony, Orange Free State and the Transvaal. Frank served here throughout the full period, his unit being the first to cross the Orange River and action in many of the famous battles. Upon his return home, Frank wasted no time in jumping ship, so to speak, for he was immediately granted a transfer to the Royal Navy, wherein he remained for the next 18 years. Since the end of the Opium Wars in the mid to late 1800s, Hong Kong had become a British colony, Shanghai an open city, and Tianjin, now Tianjin, the former hotbed centre of the opium trade. As a consequence, China's waterways were swarming with navies from Britain, Germany, Japan and the US, a situation that lasted well into the 1950s. Here, amongst many other tours around most of the world, Frank was loving it and brought many items of Chinese furniture and expensive artefacts of which still, some still remain with my late sister's family in Canada. From his home naval base in Devonport, otherwise known as HMS Vivid, Frank, at this point a leading seaman, managed on leave dates to court and marry his sweetheart, Mary Ellen Bingham, a banger lass related to no less a figure than Vice Admiral Sir Edward Bingham, R.N., and later VC, also of Bangor. Frank and Ellen began their married life in Frank's parents' home in Conlake, a short distance from Bangor. Over the next ten years or so, Frank had risen from stoker up through the ranks to petty officer, losing his rank twice as a result of the dreaded sailor's curse, the drink. However, the Navy saw this common curse as normal behaviour, common at all levels, and Frank's loss of rank did not last more than a month or two. In the interim, his family had grown, so much so that they had to find a more suitable home. This photo shows Frank holding his youngest daughter, my mother Violet, who was born in Conlig. And here we have his first home's location which was a house in Patton's Lane, Hollywood, directly behind what was to become Tugnero's Ice Cream Parlour in High Street. By the start of the First World War in 1914, Frank had reached the rank of Chief Petty Officer, had served on several ships including HMS Leviathan 
and was now serving on the battleship HMS Resolution. With the outbreak of war, he was transferred to the light cruiser HMS Dublin and took part in the Battle of Jutland, where the ship was badly damaged, with three sailors and navigator killed, and 24 wounded. She still managed to sink an enemy destroyer. But this entire period leading up to the Second World War was far from a happy one for the Fraser family. The brief I've placed here does not include the deaths of Frank's parents, but clearly was tragic in its entirety. While some of those tragedies were still yet to come, 1918 and the end of the war found Frank suffering from a serious lung condition, not dissimilar to that of his grandson today. And in 1919, he was invalided out of the Navy, but with the full pension rights for its chief petty officer. While not an overtly religious man, he was a staunch, regular attender at Bangor Road Presbyterian Church, a member of the Albert Bridge Orange Lodge and a member of the Royal Black Preceptory. He and his brother William opened what is believed to have been the first Masonic Lodge in Belfast, still there today at the corner of Ann Street and Arthur Square. However, employment was an important factor and so the two brothers either part-owned or managed the Arma Arms Hotel on the Albert Bridge Road, later destroyed during the Troubles. In 1920, Frank was offered one of the new ex-servicemen's houses being built in Church Road, Hollywood, and had all the things that he loved, like a large garden front and rear, a sort of indoor toilet under the veranda, three bedrooms and a bathroom. Real luxury. But it was here that the remaining tragedies occurred. With the outbreak of the Second World War, Frank immediately volunteered for a position in His Majesty's Coast Guard and thus spent the war period serving at Belfast Harbour Airport, now George Best, Belfast City Airport, with occasional spotting duties at Mille Here we have his medals. First his Boer War duo and his World War I trio, often referred to as Pips, Wick and Wilfred, from newspaper cartoon characters of the period. And here we have them identified, and finally, as they are now preserved, only not with me as I pass them on to my sister. But of course, her family are not interested, as there is no real family connection. They are just a little reluctant to return them. Here is a photo of Frank sitting on the wall at Hollywood Slipway a few weeks before his death in 1956. It was just a few days before my 10th birthday when I took the photo with the concertina camera he gave me as a birthday present. Sadly, that too went to my sister as I had no one else to pass them on to. In closing, it has to be said that Frank was not especially unique, but he and his generation were, for the simple reason that they fought a new type of warfare in South Africa, followed by two world wars. In my opinion, three major wars for any single generation of fighting age has to be considered unique. Strangely enough, and as far as I can ascertain, no medals were awarded to His Majesty's Coast Guard for the Second World War. If there were, they were not among Frank's collection. And so there we have the life and times, in brief, of my grandfather, Francis Wallace Fraser. Thank you so much for watching.